Okay, so what I'm going to do to start is we're going to just draw a basic egg shape. I don't want it in red, I want it in black. Uh, using the circle tool and just clicking and dragging so we'll get something that looks pretty decent. I'm going to make them kind of look like this. Using the move tool, I can move my layer around. So I'm just going to position them a little bit more centrally. And then grab my paint bucket tool and grab a nice sort of egg shell. Uh, yellowy white. Not going full stark white is nice. It's a little bit less harsh on the eyes. It'll read a little nicer. Um, eggs are often very, very white, but having a little bit of a, a variance there isn't bad. And draw some eyes on them. Da, da, da. I'm going to go for like the three, the three line eye. This egg doesn't really have a lot of features. So it's not going to be a big deal to just have like these very, very simple eyes to them. Doing my normal technique where in my color palettes, I select the color of sort of my midpoint. I'm going to add a little bit of shading to this dude, uh, just dropping it nicely, following along the edges here and kind of replicating the curve. And then I'm actually going to make it just a little bit uh, more rounded here on the edge to kind of give it this little bit more of a round look. Actually, I think I, that's just uh, come back in a little bit more round on this side, but then a little bit less on this side. Also going to give him a cool hat. Um, yeah, give him like a jaunty little toppy hat thing. <laughs> there. I think it's like a little too high. I'm going to put it a little lower. There we go. That's a nice hat. I'll give the hat an outline. Oh, before I give it an outline, though, I'm also going to put a little feather on it. That's my uh, feather design right there. Sweet. Okay, and now I'm going to outline the thing in black. Always remember as you're doing your outline, you don't want to create these jags like this where it's got like a corner filled in. You always want to kind of have it nicely touching along the edges like this. Gives the pixel art a really nice clean feel to it. Sometimes it can be necessary like on the edge, especially if you want to create like a pointed feel, but that's only really necessary when you're filling in points like that. Um, okay, I'm actually going to... Maybe go a little bit. Yeah, I like this a little bit better. Okay, here's his hat. I'm going to use that red color. I am going to put just a little bit of shading on it as well, just to give him a little bit of a... There we go. There we go. Just to give it a little bit of a transition there. And I am going to come back in with my shadow Always think about where the sun's coming from. If the sun is coming, you know, kind of from this direction, that's my arrow. Um, sun's coming from this direction, it's hitting here, and so it would leave a shadow right there under the brim of the hat. Okay, so there's Humpty Dumpty, our egg that we're going to be using for the walk cycle. Um, do make sure that you always name your layers properly. So in my layers palette, I'm going to double click on layer one. And we're going to call it Humpty Body. And then hit Enter to accept it. So the layer gets named Humpty Body. And then we are going to add a new layer for his front leg. We call this front leg. Hit Enter. Now remember what I said uh, last time we did one of these demonstrations is you got to think about the front leg as the leg actually being closest to you as opposed to like having a leg that's further in front. One of the legs, the back leg actually reads as like slightly more here to the right, whereas the, the front leg reads slightly more to the back as far as left and right. But it's actually, you're thinking about front leg as in the leg that will sit on top of this layer because it's closer to you and the hip socket's right there versus the back leg, which hip socket is right there and it's on the other side. Um, I'm going to put two little markers 
on the body, switching back to my body layer, just as reference points for where I want my hip sockets to go. I'm going to change those later uh, when I'm done the animation, but it's helpful to kind of have those two points uh, for reference, just so you know exactly where to always be drawing your legs from. Um, we're going to do these legs in kind of two parts. We're first going to get them walking and looking really nice, and then we'll add a nice black outline around them so they kind of uh, mimic the style of the body we created. Um, we're also going to give like Humpty these really long, weird, skinny legs. So let's go back to the front leg layer. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the stroke tool. I'm going to leave it set to one. You know what? Yeah, we're going to leave it set to one pixel. And starting at the hip socket, we're going to click and drag. Oh, we're going to not do it with that color. We're going to do it with the leg color. I guess we could put Humpty in pants if we really wanted to. Let's uh, let's put them in pants. Uh, let's let's actually use like a darker a darker color like this red. So I'm going to click and drag using the stroke tool, not the pen tool. So click and drag, and you'll notice when you click and drag, you can see a preview of the leg. Now you'll remember that one of the important things about a leg is making sure it doesn't break. And this position and this position are what are, are what is known as broken pixel lines. It's where the repeating pattern of the pixels um, kind of creates this offset. You can fix this offset if you use a uh, technique called anti-aliasing, uh, which kind of smooths it out. But if we're doing just a hard edge pixel line, these are all bad. This is a nice line and that's a nice line. So you kind of want to transition between those. Remember that when you're walking, your foot isn't actually like way out here. We're not, you know, doing some sort of weird military march where you got to like really swing your legs. So this one's a pretty solid one, especially if you go down with a 2-2-2 two, two, two sort of repeating pattern, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go down with a 2-2-2 two, two, two repeating pattern and then also put sort of uh, his toe pointing upwards. I always like to start with this one because it's kind of an easy one. And this heel on the ground, toe pointing upwards, is actually a really important part of the walk cycle. And so it's good to, uh, it's good to start with this one. And it's an easy enough one because it's kind of, I like to think of it as the beginning sort of contact point of a walk cycle. When your foot first makes contact in front of you uh, under, on the ground. So two, two, two down, two down, two down, and then a little toe pointing up. This will look a little bit more readable once we start throwing an outline around it. Um, but we're going to leave it like this for now. Now, the way we do a walk cycle is pretty easy. Important things to note, though, are your toggle of your onion skin must remain on. It should be yellow so that you can see your previous layer. And, uh, and then you're going to go up here to your frames. We're going to hit the duplicate this frame option. Once we are going to grab our eraser tool and we're going to erase the leg we just drew. Um, I guess we didn't have to erase the whole thing. But we can still see the faded outline of the previous frame. That's kind of the onion skin or sort of translucent um, paper effect. And I'm going to replicate very closely what I did last time, except that I'm going to kind of treat this as the knee socket right here. And he's kind of, the front uh, thigh here is still kind of forward, but now he's actually moving forward and planting his whole foot. And it looks like that. So thigh is still bent, and then the knee is kind of like right about this point, but we're not going to put the knee in. Um, I guess we could, but not really a need to. Well, we could. Maybe Maybe this looks okay. No, that doesn't look good. This looks okay. Um, and we just have the knee sort of joint here, and it comes down. The foot is planting. So this is the first planting motion of the full foot. After that, we're all good. We duplicate again. And once again, choose our eraser tool and we begin erasing this leg. The leg is now passing under 
the character. We're coming to almost the neutral phase where it's straight up and down, knee locked. It's just a straight line and you drop the toes in there. You can see in the preview, it's beginning to form into a bit of a, in a bit of an animation. We've got three frames done. Now, the leg begins to move backwards. Um, it begins to basically move uh, behind you and does a push off the ground. Uh, but it's still fairly straight as a, as a total leg. So what I'm going to do is duplicate again, erase. And I'm going to use the basically the same pattern moving backwards that I used before, which is a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Except that uh, as we kind of come to the bottom here, I'll just uh, kind of have the toe pushing off the ground. So toe down on the ground, um, heel up, so heel slightly lifted up, and we got this nice sort of backwards motion. Leg is very, very evenly. Because we're using the same pattern and kind of repeating it, you get a really nice smooth transition that looks very natural. There's not a lot of jumping around on the animation between the frames. So it's coming back 2-2-2 two, two, two down until you get near the end, and then I just drop. I'm making sure I'm using the same ground line always, so I kind of know that I'm always one pixel above the bottom of my, uh, of my drawing here. And we're going to the push off. This is the first point where we get some serious leg bending. Um, and there's two different ways we could kind of go about this. I'm going to go with a, a more quick movement here. Uh, so we're going to duplicate again and erase. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to say my knee is about here. Come back. And it's all right angles. I think I actually need to go down one more. Yeah. That looks like it would also hit the bottom there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I need to be one longer. Basically, this should be the same number of pixels as if it were straight, and then it would fill out all the way to here. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five to the ground. That's a good way to kind of make sure your legs are maintaining a fairly consistent shape as you can kind of pixel count how long the leg is. So at this point, the knee begins the forward motion. The heel lifts up and the leg raises for the step. Duplicate one more time. This is the one that actually causes more issues um, than any other one oops i just gotta make sure i do have my eraser tool but what is helpful to remember is that it is going to replicate the pattern of uh the pattern of this first one at least for the thigh so it's down two down two down two then we know our knee is kind of right here because this is where the knee was before and it is fairly similar um and then if we're going to go like this Technically, I'd like it like up one more, maybe. Uh, I don't, don't love that. There we go. Two down, two down, two down, and then one, two, three, four. Got the foot here, and we now have one leg working in a full walk cycle. Now. Important thing is, is we do want um, we do want to have a black outline around the leg. So let's do that now. Let's actually go back and uh, clean up this leg and give it a black outline. So select the black, <clears throat> and we are going to just drop these in around our image. So it looks good. Then I'll go up, do the same thing, 